Daniel chapter 11, verse 20. Then shall stand up in his estate a raiser of taxes in the glory. Oh, that's bad news. Of the kingdom. But within a few days he shall be destroyed, neither in anger nor in battle. And in his estate there shall, rise, there shall stand up a vile person, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom. But he shall come in peacefully and obtain the kingdom by flattery. And with the arms of the flood shall they be overthrown from before him, and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. For he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. He shall enter peacefully even unto the fattest places of the providence. And he shall do that which his fathers had not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey, the spoil, and riches. Yea, he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds, even for a time. He shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south, with a great army. And the king of the south shall be stirred up to battle with a very great and mighty army. But he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. Yea, they that feed on the portion of the meat of his meat shall destroy him, and his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. And both these kings' heart shall be to do mischief. They shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper. For yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Then shall he return into his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant. He shall do exploits, and return to his own land. At the same time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south. But it shall not be as the former, or as the latter. The ships of Chittim shall come against him, therefore he shall be grieved. And return and have indignation against the holy covenant. So he do. So he shall do. He shall even return and have intelligence with them. That forsake the holy covenant. And the arm shall stand on his part. And they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. And shall take away the daily sacrifice. And they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. And such as do wickedly against him, the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Right, that's much reading. And these passages here, they are liked and linked by many to be Antiochus Epiphanes by scholars and men. Now there are types and checks and balances of Antioch Epiphanes, but it's not totally about him. As the scholars and commentators are right. Pick up a commentary, they will tell you. Larkin makes 1133-35 to 35 the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, Larkin is not the Holy Spirit. I am not the Holy Spirit. Peter S. Ruckman ain't the Holy Spirit. We can be wrong. Webster's 1828 Dictionary is a great, wonderful dictionary. It's not the Holy Spirit because many of his definitions look to the Catholic Church and traditions, which is wrong. There is a historic application, Antiochus Epiphany. There is. There's also doctrinal application, which would not look to Antiochus 
epiphany. And there's a spiritual application which will apply today. So historic, yes, but doctrinally, no. All right, here we go. Raiser of taxes. <clears throat> the son of Antiochus III, so, you see, Aquas Philippar, effort to raid the temple in Jerusalem to pay his dad's war debt. He was assassinated by the Mystites. By Mystites, the chief tax collector. Well, that happened in the Bible. Saul's son sends out a tax collector and they kill him. The tax collector kills the ruler. He's the younger brother which took over the throne. This younger brother proclaimed to be the deity God. Ephesthenes, the, the Greek, God manifests. Well, that's exactly what Alexander the Great. That's what other men who to be, I'm the Messiah. And Jesus told us there will be many that will come in his name. Don't listen to him. Antiochus IV, a great type of Antichrist, but not the Antichrist. Not God. For this man said he's God in the flesh. That's an error. He defiled the temple in Jerusalem, which the Antichrist will do. The Antichrist will tell you he is God. He will be telling the people he's the Messiah. His people called him Baal, 1121. All right, so there are references back and forth. They even had a play, you know, acting out about him. Ephemphany, which means the madman. And he, he gained the throne by flattery. It's the same thing that the Antichrist is going to do. Now, when Jesus Christ came to first advent, a decree of Caesar Augustus, the king of Rome, type of Babylon, Revelation 17. It was taxes that brought Mary and Joseph into Bethlehem for Jesus to be born according to the scriptures. Your reboot, your rebellion against the government is your rebuke and your rebellion against God. But we want the rapture to happen. And maybe shut up, sit down and listen and relax and let God play out. You know, Judah would have done fine if they listened to Jeremiah. Today, Christians and so-called Christians and carnal Christians and those who profess to be Christians are not Christians. They're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. To all the world should be taxed, Luke 2, 1. By the way, it is change in modern Bibles to census or enrollment. Which you now ruin the cross reference to what we're talking about in Daniel, and you'll ruin the cross reference to the Antichrist throughout the, the Bible. Caesar is one of the seven heads of the beast, but not in all Bibles. Rome will play its part of the ten heads and of the government of the Antichrist. But if your Bible changes, taxes, raises of taxes before the first advent. This is future, even more. There is coming a man that is going to raise taxes, like they raised taxes in Jesus' time. To say, look, look how my life matches Jesus' story. The only problem is, you follow the wrong man. I am.
But that's the push of the United Nations today. And the United States of America, Democrats, Republicans, they're pushing taxes. Democrats throw it right into the pit. And Republicans, they just bring it up slowly. They say, what do you say, Stalin? Bring it on. Because the more taxes we get, the more closer we are to the Antichrist, and we'll be out of here. How do you know taxes as it was the fulfillment of the prophecy of the birth of Jesus? How do you know taxes ain't the fulfillment of the church going away? Ooh. Bring it on. It will be the internal to the international revenue service. Because when the Antichrist brings his taxes, it ain't going to be just this group of people. It's going to be all the world along with his mark. All right, you see what the future is going to be. All, oh, except for the few of the Jews. 1120, destroyed. Neither in anger nor in battle. The tax riser dies and a vile person takes his place. You got the beast, you got the Antichrist, he, he's killed, the, the, the false prophet comes up, the Antichrist comes back to life, resurrection, like Jesus. The false prophet makes an image. This is all scripture. The Antichrist, he's called the man of sin, the beast, the economical, political figure. And that's what many Baptists are into today. Economics and politics. All the gas prices are too high. And we don't want the Democrat. Don't worry about that. One of the heads. As it were wounded to death. Then the resurrection to become. The son of perdition. 2 Thessalonians 2.3. The religious figure. 2 Thessalonians 2.4. The Antichrist will bring in an economic the Antichrist will bring in a political. Any Antichrist and the son of perdition will bring in a religious. You Americans who don't like church and state, that's the future. You Americans who don't like taxes, that's the future. You're against the one world government and one world coin and, and money, that's the future. You're not going to stop it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And when the Lord calls his bride away, dead or alive, you'll be gone. You don't need to worry about it. No born again Christian saved by the blood of Jesus Christ has to worry about the mark of the beast. His estate of the vile person, 1121. State is land, is property, it's... I wonder what kind of land, I what kind of property we're talking about. We'll get to that. 1125, King of the South. Now, past references of what we've been doing in Daniel, that King of the South, is Egypt. But let's bring it up to future. Even our future. It would bring you to the modern Muslims. There they are. It would bring you to Egypt, Sudan, Libya, Ethiopia, and Saudi Arabia, where the Muslims are active and working. You say, where does the, the Muslim religion have its part with the Antichrist? With Egypt. The Alexandrian. The king of the north is the Antichrist. He is the iron and clay toes of Daniel 2, Rome. With those ten toes, those ten kings, when you go over to Revelation. And everybody loves the book of Revelation. But they don't study Daniel. They don't study Thessalonians. They don't study Ezekiel. Both these kings, north and south, will do mischief and speak lies. <laughs> Would you be surprised? Would you be surprised any United States president, all of them, any king and queen of England, any president of Russia, any leader of this world, would you be surprised that they would sit down and do mischief and speak lies? 
the Pope does mischief and speaks lies. The ruler of the of the Mormons does mischief and speak lies. The rulers of the Jehovah Witnesses who are now being charged with, with sexual folly do mischief and speak lies. Baptist pastors today do mischief and speak lies. That's why I call them these Baptist churches today. That's why I call them Baptist Catholics. They're one and the same. They got the same teachings. And I'm telling you, there's some Christians out there going to Baptist church and they follow that pastor as if he was a pope. And that pastor receives them as I'm, I'm the spiritual authority. I'm the pope. Touch, I had one preacher, one pastor talking, touch not my anointed and, and do my prophets no harm. Uh, you don't have no prophets, and, and that's the Old Testament. That's talking about Israel, you fool. There'll be treaties and summits and conferences, as there are today. This war with Russia and, and Ukraine, they'll be sitting down, they'll be causing mischief and lying, and uh, the Russia and Ukraine come up with treaties, the Pope met with them, and they got summits, and the president goes over there, and, there, and there's conferences, and then, you know, Donald Trump goes over there, and there's agreements, and then... Well, they started fighting again. They started launching missiles again. This is the, this is the story of the United Nuts and the Asians. And today, well, the Bible says there'll be rumors of wars and, 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 and wars and all that. It goes all the way back to Genesis chapter 13. The First World War. Even Abraham had his wars. He had to get all his servants armed and ready to go save his, his nephew Lot. What did that do? That brought Melchizedek. Oh, stop the wars, make love and not, and not war, peace, peace, peace. That war brought Melchizedek, this weird Bible character. That, <laughs> except for, well, he's Jesus, but he's not Jesus. That the book of Hebrews, written to Hebrews, speaks about this man. Abraham never had that war. Melchizedek would never show up. We got forecasts, weather, time, and events. Let me tell you, God's forecast is more faithful than a man in a weather forecast. The Antichrist, one of his words will be forecast. He will take that word forecast that people love on the media. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I, I can't get the boat ready. Let's, let's see what the weather forecast is. All right, before you get in the car, kids, hold on. Let me check the forecast and see what it's going to be like. The Antichrist is going to come in with the word forecast. Ooh. Oh. The crystal ball, the tea leaves. What is my future? Open up the newspaper and check out what is Aries supposed to do today? Virgo, man, he's in jail, locked up, and he says, you're going to find new love. Ah! I don't want that. Device. I'm reading about device. It's a piece of equipment made for special purpose electronic devices Dictionary, Merriam-Webster, the, the modern. I want to get the modern dictionary. Electronic devices. Most everyone has at least one electronic device today on them. Did you know that Daniel written before Christ, before any electricity? Do you know that Daniel told you that the Antichrist will be associated with your tablet, your computer, your phone? Oh, I got a message. What it is? Oh, everyone get on your knees and, and bow yourselves to the image. That's what my phone said. I get woken up 2 o'clock in the morning. My phone's going crazy. What's going on? Well, we have an Amber Alert. 
That's all the way down south. Nowhere near where I'm at. Why am I getting severe weather forecast? It's in Pensacola. That's on the other side of Florida. Uh-huh. You know one of those alerts, if you go into your phone, it's a presidential alert. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're going to have an antichrist alert. All kinds of devices are all around us. When you Google... You go to Google and you do an image search of device. The first four page of pictures are a computer, a laptop, a tablet, and a smartphone. The Antichrist is associated with something with those electronics. How do you know? You know how most people are died today? If the Lord tarries 100, 200 years, an archaeologist digs up America and says, oh, that's kind of funny how they have their hand. I wonder why. Arthritis, or what is that? That's my electrical device. That, that if you buried me with it, it won't be there. You go to a restaurant. You got a family together. You got a, a business people all together. And they're sitting at that table and what are they doing? You know, the husband don't care about the wife and the wife don't care about the children. Where's my phone? For yet the end shall be a time appointed. These events are before the second advent darkly not applied to Anicus Epiphanes. Though some are, some aren't. The Antichrist sets up the abomination of desolation, Matthew 24, 15, Mark 13, 14, Daniel 9, 29 to 31. That's not Antichrist Epiphanes. Yeah, he went into the temple, he defiled the temple, but he didn't set up an image of the Holy of the Holy. He didn't proclaim himself to be God. He, he, yeah, he said he was God, but he couldn't prove it. You realize the Antichrist is going to prove, I'm God. Alexander the Great proclaimed to have a mother and a virgin birth, and that he is God. He saw that cross on the He can't prove it. Uh, not not uh, Alexander the Great. Constantine. You know Constantine. He's in the Baptist church today. 1128. Now you return to his land. What land? What is the land of the Antichrist? Well, he's going to restore Babylon, Revelation 17, the Rome of religious. Babylon will be restored. It will be a type of Rome of religious. Like Rome is in the Baptist churches today. Washington, D.C. is architect of the Roman Empire. A lot of our structural beings of our government is surrounded by Rome. In 1983, Sodom and Sain started to rebuild Babylon, but he was killed for having no WMDS. We went over there, we killed Sodom and Sain for the weapons of mass destruction. We never found them. Why wasn't Bush put up on charges of murder? When Saddam Hussein died, they, they took down his statue. When, when the Antichrist dies and comes back to life, they're going to put up a statue. You missed that one, didn't you? The ships of Chatham or Chatham. Now this is interesting because go to Numbers. 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 24. Numbers. 24. 24. 24. This is Balaam's prophecy 
The ship shall come from the coast of Chittim, and shall afflict Asher, and shall afflict Eber, and he also shall perish forever. Well, who is the he? Asher's one, Eber's two. You don't call it he. Here's Tom, here's Fred. Oh, he's, he's going to go to the moon. Oh, is it Fred? Because Fred was the last one mentioned? Was it? You know that Balaam, when he's sitting there, he's hired to curse Israel, and, and, and he says, I can't curse him? When God put the words of him in the mouth of Balaam? Inspiration, my friend. By the inspiration of God, the Holy Spirit, Balaam gives us prophecy. I don't like the book of Numbers. Oh, there's a prophecy of the Antichrist that we just read in Daniel. I hope your Bible didn't change it. Now, Asher and Eber, descendants of Shem, the Assyrians and the Chaldeans. You, you remember something about Chaldeans? Well, that was Daniel and that was Jeremiah, Ezekiel. The Syrians are the ones that took Israel north into captivity. First Chronicles 1 Chronicles 1.17, Genesis 10, 21 to 24. Look at all the history we're learning. Look at all the future we're learning. I ask you again, why is your pastor not have this? Oh, loving, loving lilies, loving lilies, loving lilies, loving lilies. This week we're going to have lilies in love. Asher, who is Assyria, he built the capital, Nineveh, in Genesis 10 11. You know, Nineveh, the great sea monster that Jesus said. As Jonas was three days and three nights in the, in the heart of the earth, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And they believe that well. As a result of Jonah preaching, the entire city got saved. As a result of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, many will be saved. Did you lose that one? Oh, Jonas. Uh, who could believe Jonah? I do. And I've had pastors tell me, you want their name? You're crazy for believing that. Well, why don't you go home and learn how to spell Jordan? Okay? You know you know how to spell Jordan. The land of Eber. That's the Ur of Chaldees, Genesis 11, 16, 28. That's where Abraham came. Nineveh was the north, northern part of the Euphrates. I believe one of those rivers in, in Eden was called Euphrates. Ur is located the southern of Euphrates. Babylon is the, in the midst of these two cities along the Euphrates River. It's the land of Nimrod, Shennacherib, Nebuchadnezzar, Dyrus, and Alexander. I think I've heard those names before. Chittim is a Phoenician where we get our alphabet, colony on the Cyprus island. And with their ships, the Phoenicians traveled all over the Mediterranean Sea <coughs> and traded in navies. The Antichrist conquers Egypt. He makes a covenant with Egypt and Israel, but he's not going to keep it. Then he's going to attack Egypt the second time. And it's going to be foiled by the Mediterranean Navy of Chittim. Go back to Numbers.
You know, we learned in school about that great Spanish Armana. I didn't forget who won all that. But there, there's another one coming up. History repeats itself, my friend. Oh, the United States Navy in the Pacific Ocean with the Japanese Navy. Oh, here it comes again in the future. He's foiled by the Mediterranean Navy. He turns against Israel in fury. 1130. He's got intelligence, military intelligence, the CIA, etc. And he's got the spyware. And he's got the information highway. Just Google and you'll get the information you need to know. And I passed the other day. I mean, not the wrong reason. You know, I don't need to carry a concordance. Just go to my Bible, go to Google, look it up, and they're going to tell me how many. Yeah. The Antichrist will use it too. That's why I say the Antichrist is going to use the Baptist churches for his indoctrinement. He's going to forsake the Holy Covenant. There have been Jews that will side and work with the Antichrist against their people, 1132 and 34. The Antichrist will have Jews on his side as Jesus had Judas. But, like some believe and some don't, and you, you don't have to believe it or not, but that false prophet could be Judas. <laughs> I mean, the Catholic Church would love to have Peter come up from the it's not going to happen. The Antichrist enters Jerusalem with an army. He enters the temple. There's no more daily sacrifice. Then he sets up his image that the that false prophet made in the Holy of Holies, 1131. And that's where, that's where Jesus said the abomination of desolation spoken about Daniel the prophet. There it is. Now, you remember Jesus said there will be rumors of wars and wars? Did you just read about the wars and the rumors of wars? And He's going to come into Egypt and he's going to be foiled and he's going to go... Did you get that? You know who's going to understand that? The Hebrews, because they got the Old Testament. And they're going to say, Man, you know what, Daniel, that guy's a prophet. There it is, all laid out. And we got more verses to do. 